here in the Netties Esports X Tournament. Korean server qualifier. We've got the Red Terran from Team NV Maru. Taking on the Blue Zerg in the top right from Dragon Phoenix Gaming. This is Rogue. Um, yes. Second round. Next round is a qualifying match already, I suppose. So it's not that crazy, but it still kind of is. Um, as we have Rogue here playing against Maru. I just, I mean, that's just a series you don't see every day. Really interested to see how this goes. Really hoping we get something awesome and epic out of it. Uh, I've been enjoying. We got to cast Maru in the European qualifier of TSL lately. But while that was nice, may I put my hand in the air and feel like I can say like I felt like we got kind of done a bit dirty. Maru comes through the European qualifier and don't get me wrong, his games were fun. I feel like it cheated us out of all the Maru games we could have seen in the Korean qualifier on like the NA qualifier against the other Koreans and stuff. Mara's like, nah, I'm just going to log on the European server today and qualify here instead. So, excited to see him in the qualifier here for the next event. Um, he was n he was a part of it last time, right? Because we actually casted him against Serral in the group stages back in the summer. Um, let me have a quick look at this one. This was back in... S it was called Spring, but it happened in June. Uh, that was when I was thinking of it. Yep. And he went out to Solar in the playoffs. Yeah, in the semifinals. I remember that now after 3 0 in Clem. And yeah, he got second place in the group behind Serral. Yeah, so we actually had some uh, Maru action last time. Was he invited last time? Were there any invites last time? No, he qualified as well. It was the same as this. Everybody qualifies. Okay. All right, well, that's, uh, that's going to be a bit of fun as we do get ourselves set up a Hatch Gas and Pool versus the Reaper opening. Maru will just SCV scout to try and see what is going on here as well. And obviously just check if his Reaper has the safety to get across the map. Just a quick mention as we probably upload this one to YouTube. Let's face it, it's Maru versus Rogue. The title alone is clickbait. Um, then you can obviously, uh, don't forget if you enjoy the games, basically to like the video and to consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, we've got the YouTube on a good place at the moment, so it would be nice to keep that going. And your interactions with the video always helps that. Uh, so thank you so much. Let's hope it's not a five-minute series, because then that might be the only case we don't upload Maru vs. Rogue to the YouTube. As we do just see our Reaper coming around, Drone taking a little bit of damage, and a few Zerglings forcing this Reaper to turn back down to the south side. So that's just going to get pushed back down to the bottom here. And the Queen is here and putting some damage onto that Reaper once again. Reaper taking some hits. Grenade goes down, bops the Queen off to the side. And just going to be having the Zerglings surrounding up on those rocks. The Queen about halfway done. And the third hatchery of Rogue settling down in the bottom side as well. It's just getting all of that going. Our starport on the way in the main. And our third CC coming up as well as we just now take a second gas after all of this. So Maru, even not building Hellions for a bit here, really just kind of saying, okay, I'll delay those and just get everything else up first. And then I can invest into those Hellions and go from there. Well, Queen's coming over and Reaper gets chased away. Link speed is about halfway done. And just give you a bit of perspective on when the Zerg units are going to start being that little bit quicker and speedier around the map. And otherwise, still just these couple of Hellions making their way forward. And that's going to be finally a bit more presence on the map for Mario alongside this Reaper, especially as Link speed kicks in. It's kind of a late Link speed, so it's not being much pressure for this Reaper, but always nice to have the Hellions here to support at this stage, because obviously that would be Kind of nice to be able to, to deal with this a little bit more properly. As our Reaper and two Hellions. That's coming back around the right. And a couple Queens get over there. And just chasing the units away. Stimpak is on the way up with the two more Hellions. Of course, all of this has been done off a 3cc. So none of it's very committed or anything. And even just the Viking is very kind of lax, right? It's like it's not even a Liberator to try and go across the map and siege the base. It's just going to go for a little bit of Overlord hunting. He is going to make a second Viking. I think this is more of a fake out than a commitment. Second Viking doesn't really make a lot of sense. He's just trying to make Rogue think that this is maybe a Liberator on the way up because you see a Viking and either a Liberator or a Medivac, right? There's nobody that builds double Viking. So you're just trying to make him invest into Spores in a situation where sometimes he might feel as though he can skip the Spores. And you can see this Spore is already very much so in kind of an anti-Liberator position. As the Viking supply blocks Rogue as well, so he takes a big supply block there. With this Overlord still sneaking down the bottom side, Hellions are going to go running toward the natural. A couple of Queens show up immediately and say, no, -uh, you guys turn back around right now. You guys get out of here. And those Hellions do get pushed back for the moment as a couple more are going to come and join up into the center. 
that are ready to keep on pressuring as our engineering base are coming through on the natural. Our barracks are coming up. So all of that getting going as our Koreans in some trouble. A couple of drones already going down, so that's three workers picked off already. And just little bits of damage, but remember that Mario didn't commit to doing a lot of damage either. So even if he just gets a little bit here and there, it's adding up in his favor when he didn't necessarily need it. He's got 10 Hellions, which is obviously a little bit of a commitment, though. Uh, 10 Hellions is that little bit more aggressive than usual, as he's going to try and fight these Zerglings. The Zerglings realize they need to get out of range there, and they do. That's really well done. They re-engaged after the Hellions had spent some of their shots on the Queens. And the Ling's doing a good little dance to kind of make the Hellions think they can trade. And then you trade out for about half the Hellions without really taking many losses. So that was reasonable from Rogue cutting down on that Hellion cow that Mario has been building into. As otherwise Mario just gets his few Marines to the low ground. And Rogue going to build a nice quick Spire off this quick Alaire alongside that Baneling Speed. And I'm kind of excited about that. Seeing a bit of Ling being Mudo out of Rogue try and take on Maru. That's uh, definitely something a little bit different. Uh, just the Mudos in general. I wouldn't even say the Ling Bane was that crazy. But Ling being Muta, that is something which has a little bit of uh, spectacular about it for sure. As our Ling is now down to the bottom, now turning back up to the top. And the Spire will be finishing up in a second. And our Baneless Speed still coming through. As mentioned before, it's about halfway done. And these Medivacs, they are going to start making their way out across to the far right hand side. So away they go, 15 Marines. Our first real bit of pressure beyond the Hellions on this game. As you are going to clean out the Zergling on the Watchtower. It was just on hold position, so it wasn't going anywhere. 12 meters. So you got to be careful with these drops, because if you get overwhelmed and you want to lift up and leave, well, then the meters can come in and chase you. So that's often where the Zerg can find a lot of momentum, as that's going to be a cancelled fifth phase. So that's a good start, at least for Maru. But yeah, that is where the Zerg finds a lot of momentum. If they suddenly the Terran loses out on a couple of medevacs and these Marines, the Zerg suddenly gets so much map control, and then the Terran can't really do much else after. Maru is just looking for Widow Mine drops already. That's the next thing he loads up here as he... Takes down a creep tumor. He's going to advance forward with these marines. There is actually a hatchery rally to come up and the drone. Well, for a moment or two, was actually taking a while to get over here, but now it's actually going to benefit from that. As here come the mutas. The widow mine drop actually turns back around. We'll unload the widow mines in this mineral line to try and help out. And they don't go off, but they do zone the mutalisks a little bit as now just a refinery will start to drop. The viking goes down at the same time across the map. I mean, that's not super important at this stage. As here come the rest of our marines. A few of them stemming forward already. Maru does repair up this supply depot at the very least. And of course, all of this is buying time for him to get his turrets up and running to minimize the effect of these meters. Once again, repairing the refinery. And just chase those meters away. Five SCVs lost, not that bad. As Rogue's first play of the game is, is pretty successful, not losing a muta. Unless he does trail heavily on the upgrades right now. That is a really good depot lift, but that's also a really good anti widow mine play. He really split the Banes back a couple times, made them retarget, and that made life way more difficult. There's two SCVs repairing that turret, apparently enough. I would not have called that, but uh, definitely made Rogue think twice about it, and he ends up backing off here as Maru. Taking a fourth base, happy to just say, okay, we're playing a longer game. You know, I can't get across the map and be aggressive. He, he's sort of just saying, okay, I'll, I'll pull back. I'll not try and deal with these mutas while being aggressive myself. I'll put my full focus on to dealing with these meters, which is, of course, what Rogue wants. He doesn't want Maru coming across the map at him. So he lets kind of Rogue kind of control the game a little bit and says, that's okay, though, because I'm getting up into my fourth base. I'm going to get into a more comfortable macro position. And, and like I said, I don't think Maru is all too upset about that. Means the Medivac's chilling on the bottom side. A widow mine is burrowing, and a few Zerglings already just nibbling their way through some rocks over here. So, just trying to break that down as our Mutalisks, well, they have a choice to come down this left side towards this main base. A couple of turrets on the way up, so just getting established here. Here we go for one SCV, and we go for two and a turret. Like I say, if you can get those up, brilliant. But until they're up, a little bit frustrating as the Lings do not do much against the widow mines. We even have a Thor being added in, of course, from Maru as well. And we know that that really should give him just a little bit more freedom uh, when it comes to fighting these Mutas, because the Mutas can't do as much in that situation. Once there's a Thor around, it just does too much damage over time. Is That's just going to be a really nice pickup as well, Maru. Bit of pressure, and then just picks up as he sees too much Ling Bane. Being very um, conservative with his units, right? He's not running them in and just being like, okay, let's go. He's just retaining a lot of everything. You know, he's not lost a Medivac yet. He's, not he's only lost three Marines, and he has been on the map a couple of times. 
He's just being, like I say, conservative, making sure he doesn't get overly committed. He knows that Rogue is not playing the best of compositions over time. You know, Muda Ling Bane does kind of, you know, die out a little bit as the later game goes on. Now he's just letting these Widow Mines put in work as well. Is this one of our major fights that we've seen so far? Mara ends up lifting back and, uh, Due to upgrades get to work here is another Widow Mine going off just for one Ling, but the Widow Mines are kind of everywhere, and Rogue lost his Overseer, so now he can't actually kill them off on the follow-up. And if I'm not mistaken, he's not rebuilding the Overseer either. He's got four of them on the map. Okay, so they were just rebuilt already, they just weren't quite here yet. As the uh, Thor, like I say, definitely has a role to play. That Widow Mine goes off again. And it was a save on the Thor as well, lifted into the Medivac and evacuated as 30 more Banelings are on the way through. Rogue is just gonna go non-stop with that unit production. That's kind of wild. As we take the Watchtower with one Marine, we're gonna stim a few more forward, and we do obviously have Creep Spread here, which we can work our way through. So a lot of these Creep Tumors beginning to go down. Of course, Maru has been kind of, you know, for most players, I would be like, oh my god, you know, the Creep is everywhere, this is a problem, but Maru's kind of let this game develop like this, knowing that the Creep has been getting set up very nicely, so I'm not too worried. I kind of want to believe in Maru a little bit. The Medivac Micro on the Thors has been amazing, by the way. As that's obviously just been great to watch. As Maru just stands in the concave and believes he can fight. And honestly, for a long time, he could. A lot of these Banes crashing into Marauders and Thors. And once again, the Thors are saved, pulled back. The last few Zerglings go down. And Maru is going to come out of this alive at the very least. As he takes a fifth base down the bottom. A new target, perhaps, for these Mutalists. He sees it with the Overlord. Maru realizing that this is going to be a target. is already moving Marines over here. And uh, maybe that was just because he was going to go for the Overlord kill, actually. But uh, it kind of works in a, in a in a that sort of effect anyway. However, there's going to be Lings coming down here now as well. Maru, you have to bring the rest of his army through and activate it onto this position. Preparing up one of those Thors, which he's really babysat throughout this game already. And uh, like I say, it has been pretty great watching those Thors put in the work with those Medivacs helping them out. Lings running around the left-hand side, though. His Rogue is going to keep this as a fast-moving game. Just going to keep on moving everywhere. Going for the Ultralisks on the transition. That's very natural at this stage of the game as well. Ultras are this unit which you kind of want uh, when you play Ling Bay Muta. Because nothing else really transitions from Ling Bay Muta smoothly. You can't go into Lurkers. It's just too much of like a hard switch. So the Ultras really ease you into kind of a later game. And yeah, Ultras, I know a lot of people like to complain about them. But they really do work when it comes to Ling Bay Muta follow-ups. So... Again, how is Maru getting away? So many Widow Mines just on the map that just aren't being cleaned up because the Overseers just aren't around. I mean, he's got actual full-on minefields that are just not being touched by Widow Mines. As I tell you what Maru is doing really well, actually. He's really splitting the mines up every single time. He's always got the Widow Mines split apart. So a group of Banelings, when they blow up, don't take the Widow Mines with them. Or at least not a good chunk of them. And that's something which I really feel like is a common occurrence. You see, like, Bane's rolling through, multiple mines go down, but Maru has kept these mines so well split throughout. Very, very cool here as he's been continuing to fight. Rogue doing a great job of trying to fight here, there, and everywhere, and, and trying to kind of keep on top of this, but especially I feel like just not having Overseers for the mines all the time has cost him a lot. Is Maru going to target down one and two Ultras? Well, now it's just kind of Muta Ling kind of running in. The Banelings are not ready yet. A great fight for Maru. Upgrade lead for him as well as Kitness Plane isn't even done yet. So those first couple of Ultras were really before their time. And this one dies before Kitness is done as well. It finished as the final shots came in. Here we go with a few Banelings showing up. But I mean, a lot of them just going off onto these Marines. Uh, onto the Thors and not the Marines. Another Ultra goes down. Oh my goodness. Maru really does make the Ultras look bad as all the Mutas go down as well. But this is just a beautiful timing. He found two or three good fights in a row, just as the Ultras weren't really properly ready to fight either. And it looks as though that's going to be enough for Maru to break through here. He's on the top left base. The drones are going down. It was a beautifully patient game for Maru. He traded beautifully all the way through, and he made sure to keep his important units alive. Those Thors, they've been kept alive for such a long time. He lost two in this game, but these two, 21 and 14 kills. They have been monsters for Maru, and it looks as though he is on his way to victory in game number one. Damn. I mean, a Terran that just was not afraid of creep spread, huh? Because this creep was everywhere as well. Rogue had map control and all sorts. Maru says, that does not matter if I just keep on trading effectively, if I just take my time, pick my fights. He's Bane's going to try and get through the center of the bio, but losing a lot of them in the process as we do see one of the hero Thors going down. The boy that had 14 kills is now on 16. He's a captain now as we see these Banes forcing the split backwards. Is this enough? 
to hold on. Last couple of meters go down. The Queens are transfusing Ultras, and that's kind of why this army is still going here. Since we're just going to lift up from Arrow and fall back. That might have been a bit too much, although he is the player with money in the bank to rebuild. And he will start to do that pretty much immediately. As he isn't teching up either, he doesn't see the need to go into Ghosts or anything. He's very happy to just keep on rebuilding the Bio Forces as a Marine comes through, shutting down a few Changelings. And we're even going to lift up a few Widow Mines and go Widow Mine dropping around the map. And Rogue Restabilize, fantastic job from him to just have a chance to restabilize. You can see this fight from Mario was horrendous, way too overcommitted. Uh, definitely a lot of Ultras getting into play, maybe just not enough Bio around. Mario over here, he's got a couple Medivacs not in range for the healing, so these Lings are doing very well. That bottom right base for the moment will survive as well. Remember that stuff like these drops right now are going to be really effective too compared to before because beforehand you didn't have, as he splits the, the Widow Mine target fire for a while, beforehand you didn't have the um, the freedom to drop because of the Mutalisk, but now all the Mutals are dead, Maru's immediately at least got that first Widow Mine drop on the map. I'm sure that's something he will continue to do more with over time as he's already moving top left, he's kind of splitting his army two directions right now. And uh, Rogue has to figure out which way he really wants to try and go. If he can't get these bottom right or top left bases up, he's just on five bases against a five base Maru. So it's important for Rogue to find something here. As again, you see that Widow Mine split. Never letting these Widow Mines be kind of properly stacked up, although both of them go off on an Overlord there. Not ideal. Fight bottom right is going to be Banelings into Marauders. Looks like Maru will break through here to keep on going and cancel this base. Rogue just doesn't have enough right now. 145 supply, he just can't seem to stabilize as Maru's rebuild came through in force. And there's a lot of Marauders here, so these Ultras just can't even be transfused fast enough. Now we're out of transfusions, and these Queens obviously start to drop. Down here is a few Zerglings, and they might do okay simply for the fact it's very Marauder heavy. And as there are 15 SEVs going down, Ultras fighting the Planetary Fortress on the left-hand side, so Maru taking some shots as well. He kills this base once more. That's another thing to note, he's killed that base a few times. You look at the... Uh, Structures lost this game. This goes up to five hatcheries, and a couple of those were just building hatches that could have been cancelled. Now, it's going to be a lot more hatcheries than five in a few moments, because it looks like Mario's just going to keep on killing base after base. Lifts up here, just can't quite snag that additional Ultralisk kill, as we have a couple of Widow Mines. That's a full mineral line. If these Widow Mines get a chance to actually fire, that's going to be brutal. They burrow, and it goes off. Okay, it wasn't that crazy. That's another Ultra pops out, but again, if you're building pretty much purely Ultralisk, you're probably not going to have a good time at the end of the day. As Maru is still lifting up just single units as well to keep them alive. This little drop doesn't find much more. We're just rallying units just across group as well. Rogue can see this wave, this just kind of wave of doom and gloom kind of approaching. And he's just like, oh, that isn't good for me. <laughs> but what is he meant to do? Is a couple of overlords going down. Maru continues to stim up this right hand side. And just going to be going in to pick away at these final few ultralists. Widowmind still going off and helping a bunch. Obviously, eventually there's a stage at which Maru can get rid of a chunk of these, lift up, get out, just reset, rebuild. Widow Mines have been killing drones throughout this as well. And this really does look as though Maru is just, I mean, we know Maru is going to win this game. It is a really cool game. And I know, guys, I probably gushed a little bit over Maru. And, and I'm probably I'm a little bit of a Maru and a Terran fanboy. Sometimes my bias shows. But I really feel like Maru played a beautiful game. And while Rogue played great, you know, the creep spread was beautiful. It was really all over the map. While Rogue played great, it just felt like Rogue couldn't quite ever get off the fact that it was Ling Bay Muter against someone who's very happy to just get maxed out no matter what. Alright, bottom right hand side, uh, taking a pretty beautiful game number one. It is going to be our red Terran player from Team NV. This is Maru. Up left, our blue Zerg player from Dragon Phoenix Gaming. It is going to be Rogue. The Widow Mine at Rogue's fourth had 31 kills before I clicked away from it. Jeez. You know, it, it's crazy because in games like this, so much happens, right? There's so many, you know, so much action around the map. There's lots of fights. There's lots of engagements. There's so much just to be kind of looking at next. This is definitely one of those matches where you kind of want, you know, an observer to just watch and then you're kind of just moving along and kind of just casting what you can see. You're watching for things yourself. There's almost too much to talk about in, in games like this a lot of the time. Hatch gas and a spawning pool to kick us off here into this next game is... We'll see where this goes. Again, this is the match before a qualifying match. Qualifying match would be against either Solar Trap or Armani. This bottom side of the bracket is just so ridiculously stacked. It's 
kind of disgusting how stacked this section of the bracket is. It's a little bit crazy. It really, really is. Reaper is uh, on its way up once again in SCV Scout to see what's going on. This is a shorter map, um, which is generally good for the Terran, but the reason that we see it sometimes used or allowed into play for the Zerg, it's a very open map, so you can play around that. That is typically good for the Zerg. It gives you a lot of the engagements and so on. So that part of it's usually very good. Uh, we'll see if Maru can take advantage of it being a smaller map, perhaps, though, and, and really get something done with this. As you got our Reaper coming up, and a couple of Lings already coming through. Reaper is just going to be pulling back a little bit. Gets one Zergling. Pulls back down the ramp, comes back up, and go for another Zergling. Gets it. Not bad at all. TVZ on this map is tough for Terran. Um, I don't think so, because the size of the map really helps, and you've also only got six bases each. And obviously six bases each is always good for a Terran, because as a Terran, you're not in a rush to deal damage. Because the Zerg reaches a maximum amount they can mine. So as a Terran player, you can just say, okay, well, you know what, you can kind of take your bases. Like, yes, you want to deny them if you can. Makes your life easier, but... If they do get the bases, it's not like they have endless bases to keep expanding to. And if you deny a base, it's always going to be meaningful. So, because it's a small map, that obviously happens a lot as well. But like I say, then it's just open, and that, that makes it interesting. But it just means you've got to be careful with where you do position your army and where you do fight. It's the same as a lot of maps in this current map pool, where there are some, you know, there's definitely advantages for one race in one way, and then advantages for another race in the other way. And that kind of combination, that sort of back and forth, is, is fascinating to watch, you know? It's been really cool to see that kind of uh, just be a thing in general, right? Um, and I feel like multiple maps, we talked to Lambo yesterday, talked about Pride of Altaris, how it's an amazing Protoss map. But because of the gold base on the fourth, it can make it, like, good for the Zerg. And, and it is just kind of crazy to see, like, the, how these maps have been, you know, just kind of bringing you so many different options on either side. I think that's fascinating. Uh, in some matchups, at least, in some matchups, are still just unplayable. <laughs> like TVZ Pride is is unplayable on either uh, is unplayable for Terran. Uh, there's no redeeming factor for it. Well, Hellions and a Reaper as we move forward. The first Queen already going to take just a little bit of damage. The Banshee on the way from Maru as well. Just going to be seeing our Viking picking away at this Overlord. It is going to be going down. And he just tries to pick up information, but this is just pretty much the same setup that Mara had last time, apart from the Banshee. Smaller map, definitely a map where you could expect roaches, and because of the openness of the third base, I do feel like sometimes defending the 1-1 one, one roach attack, which also just hits quickly, I feel like that can be very deadly and very frustrating. So maybe that's something Rogue utilizes. We know that Rogue is someone who will mix in those rogue styles. He's absolutely done it before. There is double evolution chamber though right now, so suggesting we're just going to kick off into upgrades, and without a Roach Roran, they may very well be melee upgrades, as our Viking looks for its second kill of the game. An overlord to the top side, trying to get into the main for safety, but there is no queen on the way to help you, buddy. You know, you might, well, you might get to die in your base, but no one's going to be there to hold your hand and uh, try and help you out or anything. Eight Hellions this time, we saw ten last game, so a little bit of an adjustment from Maru, just in terms of... Hellions built. Eight Hellions just means you get your extra racks, basically 200 minerals faster, right? And yeah, it just, just speeds up the process a little bit. Last time, the 10 Hellions didn't do much because they got traded out for just a handful of Zerglings. That part of the game was really good from Rogue, as this Banshee is cloakless, and that is not well controlled at all. Maru taking a lot of damage on it. Hellions pulled back to try and deal with this incoming run by of Zerglings, which will just not do a lot before the Hellions are here. Again, benefits of a shorter map. It does not take long for you to pull your Hellions back to get them into a safe position, and to kind of just get them from being offensive into defensive mode very quickly. A 1-1 one -one upgrade's coming up, a couple of additional barracks coming through, so straight to five racks, Maru ain't messing around as he gets all of these barracks underway. Did they fix the creep spread, bro? You mean the creep on the ramp? They are, I, I know for a fact, they are working on a bug fix for all of the maps. For any of the maps that have bugs on, it's it's being worked on, guys, so... It is happening. Things just take a little bit longer nowadays, right? Especially if it's not, like, immediately urgent. Um, unfortunately, that's just the state that StarCraft 2 is in, but... Let's just be thankful that we still get updates, and we still have, you know... 
people looking to fix the bugs and people passing on the info to get the bugs fixed, etc., etc. I know it's uh, I know it's just a little thing and it's maybe just expected, but uh, I feel like some people feel as though it's not even expected right now. So no, it will be it will be fixed from what I'm told. It's uh, not going to be like that forever. Just gonna grab a zergling over there as you do see more lings heading down the bottom side. Crypt spread still pushing forward just a little bit. Those zerglings getting taken down pretty much immediately as our marines and medivacs move out the left hand side. Just gonna take the watchtower right away. Sim 4, we're going to get a few bailings already. These uh, marines will pull back into the medivacs and then boost back down to the bottom side. Aliens coming through, the Viking overhead, still just doing a decent job of denying some of this creep. Of course, it's a small map, so the creep gets across the map very quickly. That's what we're seeing a, a good amount of happening right now as a few marines just coming forward, a little bit of creep being denied. These couple of medivacs are going to come boosting around the bottom side as well, so just trying to see where they can go and what they can do. Obviously, looking as though we're going to have a bit of a larger push over here. Rogue's just gone up to, to five bases and 90 drones very quickly. I mean, it feels like they have something of an agreement to guess kind of like play some some kind of macro focused games here. As our Marines is going to load up into those medivacs. The Hellions were kind of in the wrong place, right? But unfortunately for the Hellions, they were kind of fighting the Banes when really they wanted to be fighting the Zerglings against the Banes they just don't do as well. As this Banshee will get some free kills. Rogue finishing up the Hydra Den, which is just a kind of testament to what this game is kind of starting to look like. It's not Ling Bay Muda as we saw before. It's going to be a little bit different to that for sure. A bit of Reb just being cleaned out just through the center here. Just going to be seeing how Ling's going to come running back down. Just trying to chase this down. Marines will sit on the high ground and just try and fight this. A few more Ling's dropping and looking as though that will be... Clean up from Marus again. A good few lings right there. Resources lost already. Looking good for him. 1.7k ahead. But of course, Rogue is somewhat freely moving up in toward Lurkers right now. And that's something that Maru will need to get an answer to at some stage. Else we'll be in some trouble. Lucky Den still just coming through, and we do have our Marines on the bottom left, just going to grab a Zergling as well. A lot of things actually just going to start moving through the uh, middle of the map here, and just going to go straight in for this attack. A couple of Widow Mines going off to help, a little bit of friendly fire. I mean, Mario's army just not really close enough to help out, and the entire third base mineral line is going to get absolutely run over here. By those lings and veins. That's 19 SCVs going down. Mara taking some eco hits and not really dealing any damage back anywhere, right? He's not really making progress anywhere. Lurkers are coming up. He's starting to get some tanks rolling. He's just making a lot of CCs and looking like he's somewhat happy to play a bit of a longer game at the moment. But that was a good fight for Rogue. Anytime you're slowing down the Terran economy, you're going to be pretty happy about it. As Mara's going to come up here uh, and clean out some creep, I assume, and push his way towards this top side base. As Rogue goes up to his 6th and somewhat final base of the game. Obviously, that's only his final base if he doesn't end up taking one of the bases that's meant to be Mario's eventually. That is a possibility to help you out on a map that only has six bases for you in general. As this hatchery is going to die, so Mario actually gets more than just creep. He straight up kills a base, drops into the main. There is a spawn multiple queens, though, so that's going to be short-lived. As now these medivacs uh, come back around. To the right hand side, I'm just going to see the marines in the bottom corner, just going to grab this hatchery, and that's going to get killed as well, so no cancel there. Marines loading back up, just going to boost up that left hand side. Away we go, just again keeping this pressure going. Still got this drop over here, finding a drone or two. Actually drops into this spore crawlers. Seemingly carefree, just see our lings 
running in. Marines getting a little bit surrounded right away there as well. Still a couple medevacs just up on the top and just going to be seeing our bioforce. Still moving around that bottom corner. Ling's on the counter attack. Going to do all right. The few marauders there as well. Would I mind? Okay, I mean, that was kind of a weird fight. I didn't really know what was going on with those uh, mines going off and just my marauders kind of tanking stuff. Okay, Marine's still doing damage over here, but now look as Lings and Banes are on your third base. Samara's going to have to lift up here. He's still doing great just around the map in general. Like, he is denying bases. Uh, and, I mean, Rogue is going to be set onto, like, three bases in a moment. But Maru's going to have his main base under siege in a second as he doesn't raise the depots. He's letting Ling Bane into the main. No, no, no. Good production, Maru. Okay, well, this is going to be bad as Rogue finds a way to kind of, well, he basically punishes Maru for being just too caught up in his own kind of game plan and just kind of dealing damage on the other side. Suddenly, this is really bad. You've got to be able to deal with this. You've got to keep your production alive. Otherwise, you're in so much trouble. Production is taking some hits. We are slowly getting snipes off onto these lurkers. We're going to start dropping on top of them as well. Just anything to clean these up quickly. But there's no wall off. There's no you know, Sim City or anything to work around. A Libera Siege is up. A couple of Banes going off on the Marauder, though. That's definitely going to help. And the Lings that ran up this ramp did not do much. 35, 36 SUVs going down. But Maru is taking an army supply lead. He's going to hold in the main base. A lot of his production still up and running, though not you know in a perfect kind of way. And Rogue is down on three bases. Hatchery's having to rebuild. And all of a sudden, this game is utter chaos. I mean, this really kicked off just the last few moments. Now he saves this orbital command. Going to drop a Liberator Siege on it as well. Still has his fourth base mine. Obviously lost a lot of SCVs, but he still has 52 workers. Just where the hell are they? Okay, there's a lot of them just AFK over here. Just needs to get them back on track. Couple of widow mines cleaning stuff up. He's scanning around trying to figure out what bases are rebuilding. Still does have just a good few orbitals and gonna morph another orbital here as well, knowing that the scans are important. Not needing a fifth base like super quickly or anything at the moment. Now look is coming down. That's a big initial kind of uh, move as you see a couple ghosts gonna snipe. I'm just gonna be seeing our a few more lurkers continuing to drop at the moment. Ling's coming across. They're going to try and clean this up, but they're not here to support the Lurkers in time, so pretty much all the Lurkers are dead. Yeah, the Lings are going to show up, but way too late. There's one Lurker behind the Mineral Line. That gets cleaned out as well. The Lings realize they can't come in to protect this, and Maru is going to push Rogue back. And the problem is, Rogue has just not had a lot of time of proper mining for a while, because again, these hatcheries have been down. It has been... I mean, it got evened out, but obviously the situation is that Rogue is trading worse, so he needs to be mining more. So losing this kind of chunk of time where you're meant to be mining more... And it just evens. is absolutely beneficial to Maru. Uh, I wouldn't mind here just grabbing four drones over on that left-hand side. That's going to be seeing big army pushes around the left. Just going to see some creep being scanned, cleaned up. A lot of creep tumors just going to drop as we continue in towards this base. Now if we see the liberators and the ghost counts, they are getting very high as well. We've got a couple libs out, two more about to be here. Already 10 ghosts, of course. A lot of snipe potential as we get rid of one more Ling and we go to five bases of Maru. He's keeping a watch top right to make sure this base isn't taken. He's got his army over here, so this base can't be taken. And that's how we are going to get up to a basically just a five base Zerg against a five base Terran. Is Maru even going to put some care into sniping down some overseers? That's actually important. They are expensive. And if you snipe down enough of them, I mean, you can just cloak up the ghosts and they're going to have a party. If the ghosts have cloak, which they do. Ling, look at Queen still sat in the center. Final Force going to start simming up and just going to drop a couple of uh, snipes right away. Queen's taking some damage as Bioforce pulling back. A couple of Liberators just going to set up and siege on this ramp as well. Just going to see our Ling Bane Lurker Force now going to go the other way. Now we're trying to find a direction to push in. Both players get maxed out again. So Rogue at least maxed. Just doesn't have much of a bank or anything to work with. Right now is denying some snipes. Finally we get a snipe off that kills off that lurker. That Hydra goes too far forward. It gets sniped. Of course snipes are basically the uh, <laughs> the main mechanic here for the Terran at this stage. Mario's going to split off an army including some ghosts to the top. So they're going to come running through. I mean they need to be careful. Lifting up into Medivacs. Widow Mine's doing some damage, but nothing crazy. 
I mean, again, Maori's just somewhat okay with this as long as he's trying to trade in such a way that it's five base against five base. All these lurkers go down. We actually drop the ghosts into Banelings, but then we lift them up after they tank a few of them. So doesn't actually have any losses there. Now drops the ghost back down and deal with the Lings. Cloaks them up. There's no Overseer. So those ghosts are going to clean up the Zerglings. Nice shutdown from Maru. Good way of just kind of dealing with that. I mean, that was kind of a weird way to deal with it. It definitely worked out. Now it's to the left-hand side. Can you just snipe a changeling? <laughs> I feel like that's a little bit overkill. I, I know snipes are pretty good, but I don't think you need to go out here sniping changelings. You can literally A-click them. Pretty sure you can mouse over them and changelings just die nowadays, you know? it's uh... <laughs> Okay, a little, little unnecessary of a snipe there. Additional ghosts coming through as we do see Rogue realizing he needs to do something. And he's going to try and do that with a Nidus network. So getting the Nidus up, that's going to be his plan for the next step here. That's going to be seeing that Overseer still coming around the upper right-hand corner. The few Hydras are moving back. And Hunt Shockwave's on the way as well. Just get that extra bit of radius in case you do need to EMP some Spellcasters. In this game, Rogue doesn't have any Spellcasters. And kind of rightfully so, it's been a crazy hectic game. But it is kind of the stage at which you might start thinking, oh, maybe I could get in like a Viper or so. Mario's like, absolutely not. You're not getting vision of my base. And it's going to be tough to get vision of his main because he's got sensor towers that cover basically the any way to get into the main. So you will see at least the idea of an overseer moving into position or so. So yeah, that's going to get a little bit interesting for sure. As Bio cleans out some group spread top right. Moving forward, so you're just going to see some ghosts sniping down some of these lurkers. So a bunch of these lurkers getting sniped down already. And he's still just making sure that this top right base doesn't go up at all. And that's just going to be a problem that Rogue can't really contend with. 11 more lurkers on the way. But at what point are you just doing more of the same and it's just not working, right? I mean, at some stage here, you've got to surely try something different. Maybe, I mean, clearing out the rocks and just kind of bum rushing through the middle of the map. That could be it. I mean, that could help. I mean, Mary doesn't even have a, a sensor tower in this direction, right? So it's a, it's a possibility. Through the middle we go. We do have some ghosts over here, though. We've got that defensive plan for Fortress. Six snipes and three dead lurkers immediately. And that's another dead lurker right away. But this is going to get interesting because Maru actually has a surround on this army. I mean, credit to Rogue. He has to do something, so I don't blame him. This is a, an audacious play. I mean, he must know that Maru's got an army to the left side as well. So, he's, like I say, you just got to try and do something. And, well, I mean... So far, this is this is not quite it, I wouldn't say. I mean, he's getting a couple of ghost kills and stuff, but is that enough? Gets rid of a Liberator here. The Banelings go off without doing too much. The Marauders walking into the uh, Lurkers definitely doesn't turn out well for them. As you see, an Orbital Command going down. Mario still has the army parked on the left-hand side. The problem is, as Rogue loses these Lurkers, I don't think there's much else for him to do here. Mario is losing supply, though, and I'm actually going to see a nuke lining up. Now, here we go. This is the problem as well for, for Rogue. Suddenly, these units on the left-hand side come into play. They get a lot done before they're forced to kind of move backwards here, but it looks like Rogue is going to continue for them. Medivacs do have a lift up and getaway potential here, of course. Our ghosts are going to cloak. There's no overseer nearby, so they can actually snipe freely onto these lurkers. We're just going to start picking our way through them. Did the, did the nuke land on anything, guys? Sorry, I got so distracted and caught up. I might have to go back and double check that one. As Rogue ends up supply blocked at the moment. And Mara just continued to run away down that bottom left-hand corner. Just going to be seeing more ghosts coming through, and yeah, this is definitely Rogue losing out on a, a decent chunk of units once again. I mean, for a few moments it was scary, but then Maru really started coming through, and it was just scary because there were so many lurkers. It was always going to be a slow fight for Maru. You were never just going to be able to run straight into that. Rogue is getting the top right up. I mean, that's the sixth base, which he desperately needs in a game where you're trading 16,000 resources worse. Basically, from here on out, Rogue needs to trade evenly while mining this base and not letting Maru mine the bottom left. I think that's the set of circumstances which still leads to Rogue winning this game. Unless he just gets one big fight and basically kills Maru before he can utilize a bank or a rebuild. Uh, you know, just one obviously really good engagement just to take it down everything at once. A few snipes immediately there. Uh-oh, there's a little bit of bio. He's actually just going to go and take down the hatchery, which I don't mind at all. He is going to get it as well, absolutely. So... That will fall. We lift up some of those units in the top right corner. Mara will bring the ghosts back forward again. A queen sniped down immediately. I mean, more of these lurkers are in some trouble. Snipes all over the place. A lot of lurkers taking a lot of damage already. I 
thing is, Rogue just doesn't have the Lurg account. Uh, well, sorry, he has 15 Lurgers, apparently. Man, he really rebuilt hard off of that last fight, huh? I didn't realize he uh, rebuilt up that much, as we're going to see again. Ghost Snipe after Ghost Snipe at the moment, continuing to come on through. My ghost coming back around into the center. Ling's going to go and stop the bottom left base from coming up, just as Maru stopped the top right. But again, for Maru, that's fine. Base for a base is absolutely a win in Maru's eyes. It's not a win in Rogue's eyes, because he's just so desperate. For another base, for more mining, he is, he's pretty much mined out now. You know, 160 supply, and this is getting to be the point where it's just done. Widow mine goes off, gets a Zergling, another Widow mine, going to grab a couple Lings as well. Yeah, CV's going down, Drone's going to get back to the top right as we attempt to get that hatchery back up. But what are you doing to stop Maru's army? It's going to sim on through, uh, a couple of drones going down, our hatchery is going to fall. I mean, this base had a little bit of gas and stuff on it, right? Like 1,600 gas, a few hundred minerals, 1,000 or 2,000 minerals. I mean, it's, it's not nothing. So it's still a base Rogue would have liked to have. As, oh, did he morph a planet to... <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I can't be bothered to send units down here to deal with this. I'm just going to morph a planet tree. You want to unburrow that link? You do you. I'll just long distance mine. It's better than nothing. <laughs> I was just settling for whatever right now. That's uh, that's hilarious. As we're gonna see, obviously, this new can cancel if you want to. As he just moves forward, gets some snipes, moves back. I mean, obviously, cancel those spores because the nuke's gonna kill them otherwise. Can we clean out a little bit of creep spread as Maru continues his way to the upper right-hand corner of the map here? Snipe, snipe, snipe. And gain a lot of damage. Continuing to be done as Maru. Continuing his way up over this direction. There's the planetary fortress under attack to Lings, but I actually think with the SCV repair, this planetary survives and. Yeah, these links should maybe join their burrowed up buddy. A lot of the SCVs did go down, but I think the planetary has enough HP on it anyway, so Ro can't even kill the bottom left base. Now units from Maru show up, and he's like, okay, cool. My out-of-place planetary survives. He's going to send more SCVs over here to get mining as well. So, again, the income graph is just not quite in Rogue's favor, right? And just being even like this is just not good. As now, well, Rogue, you are going to lose your entire main base, all of your tech. And that's stuff you can't afford to rebuild either. We're going to nuke over here as Maru takes the attention over to this side. The lurkers are going to go reposition. Hatchery going down. Extractor going down. Uh, these overseers are going to go down. No. Ooh, one of them dies. I think it was the overseers that died, actually, in the uh, previous nuke. I still want to go back and have a look at that. Let's just see, obviously, the attack into the main base. The hive is going to fall. The lurker den is going to drop. I mean, the spawning pool. You know, name a tech structure. Rogue doesn't have it. Okay. If you said hydrogen on infestation pit, you guys win. But they are slowly bleeding out as they are off creep. Lurkers are chasing these medivacs like, we want to kill them! Oh, Parasite Bombs, that's a full medivac that dies. Slow split away from Maru as he is moving up here with Ghost. And there's no Overseer nearby, so it's just Snipe City on the Lurkers. Finally, the Overseers move into range, but they're going to get killed as well. And that's every single Lurker just going down. GG from Rogue. And Maru is going to take it 2-0. to zero. Let's just rewind. It was around here the nuke went off. I just want to see what, exactly what that nuke killed, just because I did miss it, and I don't want to get... Uh, I don't want to miss it, make you guys miss out on a cool nuke or something if it happens. Uh, by the way, Armani 2-1 trap as well, so Armani solar in the next round, and the winner of that actually plays against Maru, so we're going to have more Maru TVZ coming up in a bit. Um, so yeah, it was around here, right? This nuke lines up. Obviously, we were kind of watching the bottom side. Did he just leave the Overseers? Okay, so all the Lurkers came chasing this way. He just left the Overseers. And did it actually kill the Overseers? Boom, it did. It killed all the Overseers. So it was kind of cool. Um, like I said, it didn't kill all the Lurkers. Because all the Lurkers did come over here. I just wasn't sure if he brought all of them from over here. Uh, but that's the nuke that we kind of missed off screen. So there you go. Just a little catch up on that one. GG's Maru 2-0 over Rogue.